Hey everyone, Jolt here. This video is going to be a case study walking you through my process of finding some unexpected connections between different ideas in my Obsidian Vault. If you follow my work, then you know that I'm keen on image decomposition and on reusing icons. So you will probably know that when you look at this book on a page, then the individual ideas you see here. So for example, I have this atomic idea of move versus touch. These are not just elements placed on this canvas in this pretty form, but these are actually images of their own. So if I click on this and I open this, this opens as a separate file and this separate file has its own backlinks and connections into various other files in my vault. And then if I go further, I can open the icons within this drawing. And again, the icons are used in various different files. So these are my backlinks here. And through this, I build from these Lego blocks of icons and then atomic ideas that I then put together on things like a book on a page. So this is what's demonstrated here with the triangle. And I recommend you watch this video if you're interested in this concept where I have these icons represented by the smallest triangles, those icons and maybe some text are then put together to form an atomic idea. That's the bigger triangle. And then the big triangle is, for example, my book on a page where I place these atomic ideas together and form one big idea or one big story. The other concept that I frequently refer to is connection by way of reusing images. So you will know that I have this image library script that automatically gathers all the icons from my vault that follow a specific naming convention and displays it on this canvas, which helps me find and reuse icons. So for example, here, if I look for the puppeteer, then I have the puppeteer here icon right here, and I can reuse this icon in various drawings. And I have a couple of videos on this subject. So if you're interested in seeing other case studies, I recommend taking a look at this video that explores how a course on PowerPoint presentation and Tiago's building a second brain are connected through the uh, bull from Picasso and also how I can visually connect ideas by way of deconstructing components and placing them on a canvas. So you will see here in this video as well. But in terms of our case study today, what I was interested in is how the icons I'm using on this book on a page. So you can see here, I'm using plenty of different icons, how these icons help me connect ideas. And for this purpose, I ended up creating for myself a new folder. So you can see here, this is my root folder structure in Obsidian. I ended up creating myself a new folder called the Mixer, where I create canvases, Excolidral canvases that represent associations. And I want to show you some of the associations I found. So what you can see here is I took the puppeteer icon and I started to explore how through visual connections I can expand this picture. And what you can see here is, first of all, I use the puppeteer icon in two places. I used it in my book on a page summary for Emergence by Steven Johnson. And I use the puppeteer icon here in Finite and Infinite Games or my book on a page summary of James P. Carson's book. As I was exploring this image, I, and you will see in some of the later associations as well, I stumbled upon this unexpected connection between emergence and infinite 
games. And let me just walk you through that idea. The myth of the ant queen is this idea that for an ant colony to be organized to demonstrate organized behavior, someone must be in charge. You need a monarch. The ant queen controls the colony, which of course is not the case. A colony is controlled by ants touching each other and recognizing through the use of pheromones the state of the colony and reacting based on that. But so that's the myth of the ant queen here. Now in touch versus move, the idea of the puppeteer is in finite game. When I move someone, I move that other person to a predetermined location. I have something in mind for the other person. While touching is reciprocal, I'm touched when you're responding from your center to my touch and we actually touch each other. So looking at these ideas, you can see here that when I move someone, I force my predetermined objective onto the other. I work from the mindset of the myth of the ant queen, assuming that for me to get what I want, the only way is to force it. So that was one connection between these two ideas. And then I thought that, well, in this context, it's interesting that ants in a colony are touched by each other. They sense the state of the colony by observing the pheromones they encounter. And this leads me to this idea that in this sense, touching is a way of signaling, sending and receiving information about the colony. And then I continued to explore this and I was surprised to see that there was another icon that I reused in my summary for finite and infinite games and in emergence. And this is this icon of someone giving a speech and people in silence hearing that speech versus the idea of listening in infinite game where when I listen to you by my silence, I create you the opportunity to share something personal while silence is associated with commanding when the obedient servants hear and act on whatever they hear. So this command and control is a finite mindset that stems from the belief of the myth of the ant queen where you need someone in a central command control power to organize activities. And so taking this idea and taking this other idea of touch being a method of signaling, I concluded that an emergent system seems to operate based on an infinite mindset. And here my final conclusion was that emergent systems work based on a simple set of rules that govern not the what, but the how of interaction. So this is like an interaction protocol that's defined. And also on this chart, just thinking on this idea of having a monarch and having a centralized power for the collective good, which is the definition of society in Carse's work versus culture, which is more this emergent behavior of the colony. I was again surprised that in emergence, I reused this icon or actually I reused the same icon in my summary for finite and infinite games because this was the later book on the page I created. Of course, this icon is used slightly in a different sense in emergence because here the discussion is about reaching a critical mass for the colony to display intelligent behavior. So in emergence, the emphasis was on reaching critical mass, creating something that is different in quality compared to the few. But this idea then led me to connect to another idea from finite and infinite games that the more 
creating a quality difference is an idea also reflected in finite and infinite games where the self is defined through its relation to others. So here's the quote from James P. Cars that we do not relate to others as the persons we are, but we are who we are in relating to others, which to me again is super related to this idea of emergence and, and colonies. And then finally, a set of associations, and then we'll quickly jump into some others to give you a glimpse of these ideas. I also followed up on this out-of-the-box idea icon that I use to, to reflect culture in this atomic idea. And this one I reused or used earlier in my book on a page summary for the extended mind. And in the extended mind, the discussion was about an experiment where students were placed physically inside the box or physically outside a box and were asked to create some creative list of ideas and students who were physically outside the box came up with more creative ideas than those that were physically inside the box. And so this led me to this idea that maybe finding ways of placing myself outside society by way of dressing or by way of choosing to live inside or outside cities, I can strengthen or weaken the grip of society and or to empower the freedom of culture. So here with this link with the extended mind, I found this idea to be uh, interesting. Now to look at some of the other associations just quickly, I'm not going to spend this much time on this, but just to give you a glimpse of these ideas. So another icon I use to describe in this case, the infinite mindset is an open door where the door represents the unexpected the surprise and so infinite players prepare themselves to be surprised they play in complete openness as in vulnerability and my book on a page summary about emergence finishes with this door where Steven Johnson highlights this idea that allowing an emergent system to emerge you never know, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. There's almost like this phase transition when the system reaches a new level of operation and through that something new emerges. So this idea that in infinite games you change the rules to avoid the game from coming to an end could be the trigger for a phase transition when something new and unexpected emerges going through this door of the unexpected is like pressing play in Steven Johnson's context. Then I also looked at the concept of machinery versus garden. Here again it was pretty interesting to see that my icon for garden which represents the infinite play of nature and represents the vitality of nature, resonates very well with the organized complexity of emergent systems, while on the other hand, and this was also a pretty interesting finding for me, the machinery is represented uh, nicely in this concept of notes are shipping containers of ideas that I used in my book on a page summary for how to take smart notes where you have a factory of atomic notes. This led me through this whole chain of ideas that I won't go into. If you want, you can pause the video here and you can think about this as well. But in the mindset of finite and infinite games, I wonder if Zettelkasten and these packaged ideas as shipping or notes as shipping containers of ideas 
really has the right level of infinite play and freedom to them. I don't really have a conclusion, but the emphasis in Carse's work is on dialogue and on expected response. And here in the idea of Zettelkasten and individual fixed atomic ideas on note cards that seems to contradict this to some extent, but I don't know. So this is not something I've thought about much, but this is an interesting thought that occurred to me just by looking at the relations and the reuse of icons. And then uh, I have this icon about uh, exploration versus narrative, where the narrative icon is also used in informal storytelling in Extended Mind, and the explanation uh, icon is something I reuse in my book on a page for how to read a paragraph. And so that's uh, another connection. I don't want to bore you with the details just to show you the final connection I made was using the checklist icon, which turned out to be a pretty rich picture because I used the checklist icon in my book on a page summary for building a second brain for project checklists. I use it here the, in how to take smart notes about breakthrough results through daily consistency. And of course, I use the checklist icon here in my book on a page about the checklist manifesto, as well as I use it in finite and infinite games. So those were some of the ideas that crossed my mind as I started to explore the icons I'm using in this book on a page summary. In the end, I decided to create this mixer because to me, the idea of a mixer represents this space in my PKM system where I bring items together to associate them. And finally, if you're interested in my visual PKM approach in creating book on the pages, in creating this deconstruction of ideas, reusing icons and finding connections in your vault in a visual way, I encourage you to check out the Visual Thinking Workshop Cohort 6, which will start on 4th of November and will extend until the 9th of December. This time we're going to be reading, playing to win and creating a book on a page summary. I encourage you to check out the link in the video description to find more information about the course. And that's all for today. I hope you found this adventure into visually connecting ideas insightful and I encourage you to do the same in your own world. Identify some icons that you're using multiple places and look at the different documents, different drawings where you're using that icon and see how those ideas connect and how those ideas supercharge or emphasize certain points or how they maybe contradict each other and use that to deepen your understanding of your notes. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.